Section thirty five point five, integrated rate law expressions. The integrated rate law expressions provide the temporal evolution in reactant and product concentrations. Simply put, it tells us how the concentrations of the reactants and products change with time. So first, let's look at first order reactions. Let's assume this is an elementary reaction. And then we can look at the reactants and their coefficients, and realize this is a simple first-order reaction, because the coefficient in front of this a is just one. The reaction rate is simply k times this concentration of a to the power of one. And also, we know the reaction rate is the consumption rate of a. So we have this negative d a over d t. All right. Now I'm going to show you this part again. This R is the reaction rate. This K is the reaction rate constant. R is equal to K times A to the power of one. That means this is a first order reaction, and this is the so-called rate law. The rate law tells us how this R depends on the concentrations of the reactants. All right. Now, let's look at this equation. From this equation, you can see we have two variables: the concentration of A and time. And somehow we can move all these A's to one side, all the T time to the other side, and then we can integrate both sides to ob obtain the integrated rate law. So this is what we're gonna do here. So again, we move this dt to the left hand side. We move this concentration of a to the right hand side. We get this equation, and then we can integrate both sides. And then we find this negative kt plus a constant is equal to the logarithm of a plus a constant. So what is this constant? It can be any constant because these two integrals are both indefinite integrals. So we put those constants together again. This constant and that constant, they can be any constant, and the difference between two arbitrary constants is also a constant. Therefore, we have this L and A is equal to negative k t plus a constant c. How do we determine the c? We have a initial condition here. At time zero, let's say the concentration of A is a naught. A naught denotes The initial concentration of A. So this zero means time zero, and then we plug in this initial condition here at time zero. So plug in this t equals zero. A is equal to a naught. Replace this A with a naught. Again, when time is zero, A is a naught. And then by looking at this equation, we know C is simply the logarithm of a naught. And then we obtain this integrated rate law expression over here. The concentration of A is equal to the initial concentration of A over here times a exponential function e to the power of negative k t. So we can plug in t equals zero here, and you have A equals a naught times e to the power of zero. So that's correct. And also you can plug in t equals infinity here. E to the power of negative infinity is zero. That means well. Uh, if you wait long enough, the concentration of A approaches zero. Now let's uh, uh, look at this equation. A plus P is equal to A naught. Why? Because initially, assume there's only A in the system, so you have A naught as the concentration of the reactant. But P does not exist in the reaction system at the beginning, so P naught is zero. Now I want to say, well, if you produce one p, you will have to consume one a, right? So that means the sum of the concentrations of a and p should be a constant. And initially, the sum of a and p is a naught. Therefore, a plus p is always a naught as the reaction proceeds. We can also prove this. So we can just uh, uh, evaluate the first derivative of a plus p with respect to time. 
we're going to see this part is zero. That means A plus P does not depend on time. So we got this equation, all right? And dA over dt, well, this is how fast A is consumed. So this is negative kA. And over here, dP over dt, this is how fast P is produced. And that's k times A. So again, the result is zero. That means A plus P does not depend on time. A plus P is a constant throughout this reaction. And when we have this equation, and we have this equation as well, we can immediately see this P is A naught minus A. And A is A naught times e to the power of negative kT. And now we have this expression for the product. The concentration of the product is A naught times this 1 minus e to the power of negative kT. And again, we can plug in time equals 0, time equals infinity here. When time is 0, well, this is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So the initial concentration of P is 0. And also, we can plug in this T equals infinity here. And then, in that case, this part is 0. And then we have P is equal to A naught when T uh, approaches infinity. All right? So finally, we have this expression for R. R is the consumption rate of A. R is the production rate of P. And we have this dA over dT is equal to what? We can plug in this here to evaluate this d over dt, and we get this expression. And this expression is also k times a as um, the rate law for the first order elementary reaction. Now let's look at the half-life and uh, the first order reactions. Uh, what's the definition of half-life? This is the amount of time it takes to reach this condition. The concentration of A is 50% or one half of the initial concentration. So we first have this expression for the concentration of A. And then we just plug in this A as one half of A naught. So that's what I did here. All right. And then by solving this equation, first you cancel A naught. You have this exponential function is equal to one half. And then we have this half-life. The half-life is simply ln2 over k. Now let's look at second-order reactions. There are two different types. You can have 2a producing p. You can have a plus b producing p. So let's look at this one. This one is easier. So this is the reaction. Assuming this is an elementary reaction, and we just look at the coefficient here. This is 2. So the reaction rate is equal to the reaction rate constant, k, times a to the power of 2. All right, and we need to define the reaction rate. The reaction rate is how fast the product is produced, or how fast this reactant A is consumed. Uh, pay attention to this negative sign here. This is because dA over dt is always negative. This part is always negative. And also pay attention to this 1 half. This is because to produce 1p, you need to consume 2 a's. Therefore, the consumption rate of a is twice that of p. All right, so we have this equation. We have this two equations. And then we'll have to think of a way to derive how this a changes with time. So why don't we just have this guy to be equal to this one? All right, so that's what I got here. Uh, there are two variables, the concentration of A and time t. First thing, we need to separate these two variables. So I multiply both sides by dt. So you have dt here. And then I move this A squared to the right-hand side by dividing both sides by A squared. All right. And finally, I moved this 2 to here just for convenience. And then we have this equation. This is one of the many differential equations uh, to be solved in physical chemistry. And then we integrate both sides to get the integrated rate law. So after we do the integration, we have this 2kt plus a constant is equal to the reciprocal of A. And now we need to determine this constant by using the initial condition at time 0, A is A0, which is plugging times uh, t equals 0 
A is equal to A naught, we determine that C is simply the reciprocal of A naught. And this is the integrated rate law expression. The reciprocal of the concentration of A is equal to 2kT plus the reciprocal of the initial concentration of A. And also, you can rewrite this equation in this form. And also, you can define k effective to be 2k, while this is just to make the expression a little simpler. How can we determine the half-life for a second-order reaction? Well, again, the definition of half-life is the amount of time it takes to half the concentration of A, so right here. So what we need to do is we need to just plug in uh, this uh, one half of A naught here. And then this T is going to be our half-life. So that's what I did here. Uh, this is A. Now this A is one half of the initial concentration of A. And this time is half-life. By solving this equation, we have this half-life for the second order reaction. It's 1 over 2K A naught or 1 over k effective A0. Again, this k effective is uh, defined to simplify the expression. It's just to get rid of this 2. Now let's look at a more complex second order reaction. What if you have two different reactants, A plus B? All right, and then what do we do? Well, A and B may have different initial concentrations. So we just define this delta to be B0 minus A0. Well, again, this delta is the difference between the concentrations of B and A uh, before the reaction starts. Uh, and also, you probably realized that if we consume 1A, 1B will be consumed simultaneously. If you consume 2A, 2Bs will be consumed simultaneously. Therefore, the difference between B and A never changes. So this delta is not only B0 minus A0, this delta is also B minus A. Again, delta does not change throughout the reaction. Let's look at the simpler case first. Let's say delta is zero. That means initially, B and A have the same concentration. And then we have this uh, reaction rate law over here. R is K times A uh, times B. Again, R is the reaction rate. K is the reaction rate constant. And because A is always equal to B in this case, uh, we can just solve this differential equation. That's pretty easy. You get this uh, equation here. If you compare this equation with uh, the 2A to P equation, you'll realize over here there's a 2, a number 2 here, 2KT. Two over here, it's just 1KT. See, this is just 1KT. Well, again, this is because uh, in this reaction, you do not have 2A on the left-hand side. You have only 1A and 1B on the left-hand side. So that's why. All right. Now let's look at a more difficult case. What if delta is different from 0? That means A is different from B. And then we define, again, delta is B minus A. So the reaction rate, again, it's a second-order reaction. It's first order with respect to A and also first order with respect to B. And B is always A plus delta. So we need to solve this differential equation now because, again, the reaction rate can be defined as the consumption rate of A. It's negative dA over dt. And also, given the rate law, we know this reaction rate is also K times the concentration of A times the concentration of B. So when that's the case, we'll put this expression and this expression together, because they're both the reaction rate. And we got this one. Now let's look at this uh, differential equation. We have two variables. Y is the concentration of A, uh, one is time. When you have two variables in a differential equation, first thing is to separate these two variables. So that's what I did here. I moved this uh, time to one side, and all this concentration of A to the other side. And then here's a trick. Uh, we need to uh, kind of separate this. The trick is uh, this. 1 over A times A plus delta is actually 1 over delta times uh, the difference 
between one over a plus delta and one over a. So I'll let you verify this. Also, you can just look at this too. If you combine this two, well, one over a plus delta minus one over a is gonna be well. If you look at this two, they have different denominators. So think of a, a simpler case. One over x minus one over y is simply what is y minus x over x y. So you need to rewrite one over x as y over x y. You need to rewrite one over y as x over x y. This way you have the common denominator, and then the expression of one over x minus 1 over y is simply y minus x on top, x times y on the bottom. So same here. You just do this uh, expression. I'll let you verify this on paper. And then the reason we do this is because now we can integrate this. We can integrate this as well. The integral of 1 over x is ln x. The integral of 1 over a plus delta is ln a plus delta. So we got a logarithm here. We got another logarithm here. We put them together. We get this expression. It looks a little complicated, but a plus delta is simply b. So I put this b here. This is the integrated rate law. Now we need to determine the constant c at time zero. We know b and a are b naught and a naught. At time zero, this kt is zero. Now we have this constant determined. Therefore, we have this kt is equal to 1 over delta times the logarithm of the ratio between b and a minus 1 over delta times the uh, logarithm of the ratio between b naught and a naught. We can put them together. We get the integrated rate law for this a plus b reaction.